When Jay and Deborah Ross got married, neither of them had a clue what a successful marriage looked like. I wasn't real sure what, what marriage was about. Uh, when I got married, it was just, you know, I was in love, but I didn't know, I had not seen a model marriage, in, you know, lived out in front of me. My life was all about me. Both had come from broken homes and tried to mend their emotional wounds with material possessions. Deborah owned a chain of dance studios, and Jay ran a pawn shop. Accolades, money, applause, um, anything that was a pat on the head was like, um, it was an addiction to me. I needed it. I needed people to appreciate me. Although they were successful, it didn't fill the hole in their lives. I lived pretty high on the hog in my 20s and had a good time, but I was always empty inside. After their children were born, the stress of running two businesses and raising a family began to take its toll. It wasn't until I started having children and I realized I couldn't do it all. It was like a roller coaster. You know, you just go wide open during the week, and then on the weekends, you try to drink it down. And so I was like, there's got to be more to life than this. One day, a lady visited Deborah at her dance studio with an unusual request. This lady walked in my, into my studio one day, and she says, we need somebody to dance in our Easter cantata. I was like, oh, well, I'll get one of my students to do it. She says, oh, no, no. I think the Lord sent me in here for you. I, I think you're the one. I mean, I knew nothing about the Bible. I just walked in, did my part, and walked out. And when I walked out, I fell to the ground, and I started crying. And this gentleman walked by, and he said, young lady, he said, your life will never be the same. God has touched you tonight. Deborah began attending church and gave her life to Christ. She prayed for her husband's salvation. However, it would be a long time before that prayer was answered. Deborah sold her dance studios so she could focus on raising their boys. Unbeknownst to her, Jay was leading a secret life. He often attended church with her, but she could tell his heart was far from God. She just didn't know how far. I was a good liar. I lived a lie my whole life. The Lord actually showed me point blank that my husband was lost. He showed me the pornography that my husband was dabbling in. You know, I thought the, that he just drank beer occasionally, and God began to show me that he really drank a lot. And it even got to one point where I said, Lord, don't show me anything else because I can't take anything. I, mean, I was so disappointed in my marriage that I did not want to see anything else. But there was more. Jay also had a gambling addiction and nearly lost their home. People would call during the day when I would be at home and they would threaten me over money. And it was stuff that I knew nothing about, nothing. You know, when we couldn't pay the mortgage and, you know, couldn't pay employees and back taxes were due and all these different things going on, that really shook me up. It really shook my faith. But the biggest blow of all was still to come. For about a year, I felt total darkness in my home. Um, my home felt very vacant and cold. One evening, Jay went out, but didn't come home. I called the police and I said, you've got to find my husband, something's wrong. My husband's never done this. Deborah waited up all night. That morning, I felt the Holy Spirit's presence come on stronger than anything I've ever felt. And I pulled over to the side of the road and I just said, okay, help me, Lord. I, you know, forgive me, Lord. I truly want to repent. I just want, I want everything that you have for my life. It's surreal right now, but I was okay with losing my wife, with losing my children, with losing everything that I had. But for once in my life, I was not gonna live a lie any longer. And I heard him telling me that he loved me. And I'd never really heard that. And the next words came out of his mouth was, okay, you need to call your wife and you need to confess. He said, are the kids around you? And I said, no. He said, well, I want you to get in a place alone where I can talk to you, I don't want them around you. And I said, okay. So I went to the bedroom, got on the bedroom phone, and he started talking, and he began to confess everything. For the past year, Jay had been having an affair. I felt like I was dying. I literally felt like I was dying of cancer. It was horrible. Although she believed her marriage was over, she would soon find out that her 13-year prayer for her husband had not been in vain. Jay confessed to Deborah on a Friday. The following Sunday morning, he called to see if she would go to church with him. She said yes. And I don't remember one word the pastor said, but I just knew that I had to get through the altar and that I had a lot of stuff that I had to lay down. I'd always seen miracles happen at the altar, 
and I always knew that when, you know, when you're at the foot of the cross, things happen. There was so many things that I needed to be delivered from, and I just felt like that was going to be the place where I could cast all my cares on the Lord. Men gathered around Jay to pray for him. Jay stayed there for over two hours. When he stood up, he knew he was a new creation. I needed the two hours or two plus hours there at the altar because I was going to refuse to get up until I got my breakthrough and I knew that I was uh, born again and that uh, all my sins were forgiven, but also knew that it was a long journey for what the Lord was going to have in store for us from there forward. Over the next year, the Rosses worked together to heal their marriage. Deborah chronicled her story, and today the two of them share their story at marriage conferences and other venues. You've got to remember that God is on your side. He's on your side. He is for marriage. He hates divorce. He loves you. He wants you whole, but more importantly, he wants your family whole. He's no respecter of persons. What he did for me, he'll do for someone else. I think the, the really defining factor is, will you say, yes, Lord?